Now that we got all the preliminaries completed, we've installed the web server using XAMPP or WAMP, or you have your own hosting service set up and ready to go. What we're going to do in this video is actually write our very first PHP script. We're going to look at some basic PHP rules, and this will create the foundation. And from here, we can get into the meat of PHP programming. So the first thing you want to do is open up a text editor, something like Notepad or a simple edit on, on Mac. Or if you have a program like Macromedia, Dream, Macromedia Dreamweaver, well, now it's Adobe Dreamweaver, you can use that to write your PHP code. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as you can write text inside of a document. You don't want to use something like Microsoft Word because it will try to auto-format the text. So you want to use something either designed to write HTML or PHP code, or you want to use something very bare bones and simple like, like Notepad on Windows or like uh, something like BB Edit on Mac. I'm going to be using Dreamweaver Max 2004 simply because I have it installed here. And it actually makes PHP editing simpler than it might otherwise be because it comes with some built-in PHP buttons that allows me to insert PHP code very easily. But you don't need these to do what we're going to be doing. Actually, you don't need any of this stuff to write PHP code, period. There's actually many PHP programmers out there and programmers of many other languages that prefer to use very simple tools so that they have total control. This is a taste issue. Personally, I think a little automation along the way to help speed up the process in terms of writing your code comes in handy. With all that said, let's start by inserting a block of PHP code. Now I'm just going to click the insert code block button with Dreamweaver and it pops it in for me, but you can just type this by hand. Now, as we cover briefly in another video, PHP code blocks always start with the angled bracket, the question mark, the word PHP, and it closes with the, the question mark and the angled bracket. You notice that there has to be no space between the question mark and, and the text PHP. I'll just hit the backspace here. And there should be no space here as well. This has to be touching. But in terms of between this first tag here and this closing tag here, you can have all kinds of space if you like, as long as they're not touching. So you can't have this, but anything like this or like this, it doesn't really matter. It will work fine. Now, this opening and this closing tag here forms what you would call a PHP code block. And basically what that means is that any code, any text that you type in between these tags, the PHP engine will assume that you're writing PHP code. You can think of it like a standard HTML tag. I'll make some room. Whereas we have our body tag, which is opening, and our closing body tag. And anything in between those two tags is interpreted by the browser, which is another type of engine. Um, it's a code processing engine, if you will. It's interpreted as, by the browser as being HTML code that's going to display, be displayed in the main page. So same thing goes with the PHP tags, except in this case, what's in between the PHP tags is PHP code as far as the PHP interpreter is concerned. So our next step is to actually write a little bit of PHP. So as we're going along, before I go on, as, as we're going along, feel free to pause the video and actually type in the code as we go. It's very important when you're learning how to program that you actually follow along and type the code and actually do things. You want to see mistakes happen. You want to, you want to get your hands dirty, if you will. It's, it's cool and it's all right if you just want to sit and watch for now, but you're not going to really learn until you do. With having said that, let's actually type in a very simple PHP. I'm just going to save that. Hello world is the classic first thing that you do when you're learning a new language. Every new language does it, so I figured we might as well do it here. So let's look at a couple of things 
with this particular line of code. First thing we should notice is we have the print command here. Now print is a built-in thing. We'll just call it a thing for now. They're actually called a, it's actually called a function. It's a built-in tool or mechanism in PHP that basically prints things to the page. So when I print, when I say print hello world, I'm telling PHP to print out the text hello world. PHP knows its text because there's a quote or double quotes around the text. Now, nerds will call text strings. You can think of this as a string of text because a string of text because of one piece of text followed by another, it's strung along. So oftentimes you're gonna hear programmers refer to strings. So now you know when they're talking about strings, they're actually talking about text. Now a string could be any length, it could be, actually a string could be just one letter, or it could be pages and pages long. Again, back here we got this built-in function, and again a function is thing that is built into PHP that performs an action, and in this case this function is printing the text, or as nerds would say, the string, hello world, into a web page. You'll notice a semicolon, which I just highlighted at the end of this line of PHP code. Semicolons in PHP have, have a very particular meaning. They basically act as a period as far as the PHP engine is concerned. Essentially, when PHP, when this page gets processed by the PHP engine, it hits this code block, it goes, ah, okay, this is some PHP, and then it, hit, and then it continues down and hits and sees the print command. So then it prints out this line of text, and when it sees a semicolon, it knows that this particular command, the print command, is finished. So then it goes on to the next line, and you might have, you might have other print commands or all kinds of other functions and all kinds of other things you can do. I just want you to understand that the semicolon acts like a period in the PHP language. It just tells the PHP engine, the interpreter, that this is the end of this particular PHP command. In this case, it's the print command. I know I'm repeating myself many times. I'm doing it on purpose to sort of drone a point. Another word that people might refer to commands, they would call them statements, as, as if you're making a statement to the engine. So I'm stating to the engine, print this. So oftentimes in PHP books or when other programmers are talking about things or talk, they'll, speak, they'll speak of statements. So now you know what statements are. So let's save this very simple page and we're going to actually preview this uh, using WAMP or XAMPP using a web browser and we're going to actually see what PHP does. Here I've launched Firefox, and you notice I'm at the 127.0.01, which is the localhost address, which is the, the address, that universal address of my own computer. And I'm in WAMP 5, and since we're here, when you load up WAMP 5 at the localhost address, this is what you call the root because I'm not in any subdirectories, WAMP pulls up this very useful page, and you see here, besides the tools that you can access, you have a list of the projects. Now these are websites that I've created within the WAMP subfolder. Let me jump into that and you'll see what I mean.